Many thanks for staying here on news. There's not a 2016-2017 academic calendar for basic schools in the public sector begins today. All over the country, a good number of these schools will receive uh, new enrollments to fill vacancies. Now, while parents, teachers, and pupils prepare in apparent readiness for the new academic year, issues pertaining to lack of teaching and learning materials at these public schools remain a challenge. Now, from poor or non-existing classroom blocks to overcrowding, lack of textbooks, lack of furniture, and inadequate teachers uh, remain but a few of the challenges that continuously hamper a smooth academic calendar in these schools nationwide. And meanwhile, the Ghana Education Service has released approved fees for second, second cycle institutions for the 2016-2017 academic year. Boarding students are expected to pay 1,022.20 Ghana cities, while day students will be required to pay 560 Ghana cities. Away from that now, let's still stay with education, though, but to a rather disturbing issue. And the Colleges of Education Teachers Association of Ghana, the CETAC, say they will continue to stay away from their duties until government gives in to their demands. CETAC began an indefinite strike on Monday, September 12, to press home their demand for government to migrate the tutors of Colleges of Education to a tertiary status. Now, according to the association, although Colleges of Education were classified as tertiary institutions under Act Act uh, 847 of the 2012 Act, the rank of tutors was yet to reflect that change in the status of the colleges. Now, the group maintains they will not back down on their calls for a proper representation until government meets its demands. Patrick Akarentri is public relations officer for CTAC. is joining me on phone now with some thoughts. Um, Mr. Entry, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, sir. Mr. Entry, can you hear me? Good morning. Morning. Okay, first first thing is to take us through your concerns once more. Please come again. I'm saying the first point is for you to take us through your concerns once again, and then we'll be able to uh, look at them uh, sector by sector or scope by scope. The line, the line is Patrick, can you, can you hear me? Okay, so Patrick Akarian, you cannot hear me. He is public relations officer for CETAC. Uh, unfortunately, he cannot hear me, but uh, we'll still try and see whether we could raise him on the lines once more. But there's an issue happening in the Volta region. It has to do uh, with uh, a, a proposition. Let me put it this way. Uh, if trends in the Volta region do not change soon, the NDC may lose the general elections. Now, that's the word of the Member of Parliament for Ketu North. James Averji, who says the high level of apathy among the party supporters in the region is the exact same of what prevailed in 2000 when the party lost power. Now, he explained that prior to the 2000 general elections, there were cries from people of the Volta region that the NDC had done nothing for the region. Therefore, they would vote against the party in the general elections. This development, he said, resulted in the NDC's loss of power. A situation he foresees if nothing is done about the many concerns of party supporters currently. Speaking of the launch of NDC campaign tax force for the K2 North constituency in Joji, Dr. Averji stressed that history might repeat itself if care is not taken. He therefore cautioned NDC faithful in the region not to slack during the upcoming general elections, but come out in their numbers to vote for the NDC. In 2000, after the NDC ruled for eight years, we, the people of the Volta region, promised not to vote during the general elections because we claimed the NDC did nothing for us in the region. Now, flag bearer of the Position New Patriotic Party, Nana Dodanko Ekufuado, has described as unacceptable the high levels of unemployment in the country. A situation is promising to change if given the mandate in the general elections. Now, he says the situation is so dire, its worsening impact may be devastating for the country if not immediately addressed. Speaking at a forum in Accra, Nana Ekufuado, drawing on World Bank data on Ghana, argued that 48% of Ghanaian youth are unemployed. He promised that an NPP-led administration would devise policy programs targeted exclusively at dealing with the unemployment challenge amongst the youth in Ghana. The biggest challenge confronting our nation is the unprecedented high level of unemployment, particularly 
amongst the youth. According to the World Bank, about 48% of Ghanaian between the ages of 40, 50 and 24 are unemployed. Thus, over 18% of those aged between 25 and 64 years are inactive or unemployed and actively looking for a job. More than 150,000 students leave school at various levels of education every year for the job market in Ghana. The MPP believes that the only sustainable way of addressing this challenge is by expanding the productive base of, of the Ghanaian economy and then enhancing enterprise growth. Flag bearer of the opposition, New Patriotic Party, Nana Adodankwe Kufuado, uh, over there. But you're watching News Desk here on the Joining Channel on Multi TV. We're taking another break. When we come back, we'll bring you updates in business and sports. Stay on. <laughs>